Hi everybody, I'm Linda Crouch and I'm the Assistive Technology um, professional here at The Little Lighthouse. I'm so excited that you're here today and I'm excited to share my experience in adapting toys for little ones uh, with special needs. So a lot of our children have difficulty accessing toys with just the regular buttons that are there, whether you squeeze their arm or their foot, uh, those buttons are just too small for our little ones to be able to access. And so what we like to do is try to figure out a way that we can teach parents um, and other professionals how they can adapt the toy themselves. Very easy to do with just common things that you might have around the house. And it allows you to really customize what your child likes and what you know they're gonna respond to. So let's get started and I will show you some of the items that, are, that you will need in order to set up before you actually start adapting the toy. All right, so first you're gonna need a toy and you'll wanna pick one that has a switch in the hand or in the foot, a seam ripper, a needle and thread. You'll need speaker wire, electrical tape, solder, screwdriver, a battery tester, a 1 8 inch mono inline phone jack, scissors, a wire stripper. This is a third arm, it's a clamp, a switch, and a soldering iron with a stand. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is make sure that your toy works. You're gonna make sure that you have the batteries in place, that you have it on, and that's just helpful so that you know how the toy works before you even adapt it. So I'm just gonna push its hand here, and that's all that's needed to be done to activate this toy. When you push it again, it turns it off. So this is an on-off switch, that's what it's telling us. So this switch was already placed um, here within this uh, toy's hand. So what we did is we used a seam ripper and we tore uh, or seam ripped up those seams. And then we were able to really uh, pull out some of that stu stuffing and then get in there to really see, oh, uh, that's what's making this toy activate. So you can see that's a really small switch, which would really um, require a, a child to have good fine motor skills to pinch. And what we're gonna end up doing is being able to use a larger switch so the child doesn't have to use those fine motor movements. They can just hit it with the back of their hand, they could hit it with their head or an elbow or a foot. Um, or a knee, anywhere that might be helpful for that little one where they have extra good uh, consistent movement. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do after we, or the second thing we'll do after you pull out the uh, threads there, you're gonna pull out that switch and you're gonna see two speaker wires that are there. And that's where we wanna start with cutting. And you want to, when you cut, this would just be my advice, is to leave a little bit of extra wire right here just in case you ever needed to solder this switch back for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. So now that toy is no longer activated with the small switch. Now a lot of the uh, wires that come in your toys they are gonna be a more of a narrow gauge um, and they're, they're really kind of temperamental. So if you use wire strippers, just know you're going to hold uh, one of the wires with one of your hands to kind of stabilize it. And then you'll use the wire stri stripper to take off the casing. You probably wanna do about a half of an inch. Um, may not need that much, but if you're a beginner on this, you wanna give yourself a little bit of extra. Sometimes it's a little harder to use the wire strippers. So I've actually used scissors at times. And I just make sure I'm not cutting through the wire and just hold on to that wire and then able to strip it a little easier that way. So that was a little more successful. Everybody kind of has their own uh, technique, but you can try either one. You know, we've taken off the switch, but if I actually connected these two switches or two wires together, the toy comes on. So I've just closed up that little electrical loop uh, for the toy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off by touching those two bare wires together. Now you're ready to move on to the speaker wires. Uh, that you, I already cut some off. This is definitely a different gauge than the wires that are on here, but that's okay. So what I've done, I already previously did this, is I took my scissors, I'll show you here, 
and I'm going to cut between the two wires. There's, so there's two wires in this uh, strip and I need to get to both of those. So I'm gonna cut in between those wires. I'm gonna be careful though to not take off any of the casing. You do not want any uh, wires uh, showing because then those will end up touching each other and your toy won't work. And then again, we're gonna strip those, um, that casing off of each of those wires. I've already done that on this other side, um, but you'll wanna do it on both ends. Okay, so now I have my wires um, that are do no longer have the casing and I've done that for both sides, so we're doing great. The next thing that we're gonna do is we need to be able um, to solder one end of the speaker wires, one uh, strand to the other strand, and the second strand to the second strand uh, of wire there. So I'm gonna bring this over. My soldering iron's already on. And I'll need my solder, I'll need my wire. <clears throat> You probably have to make sure you don't have any fuzzies in there or stuffing. So you can even pull out some of that stuffing if you'd prefer. We could do that so that you're not worrying about um, solder catching on any of the stuffing. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna solder one. So I'm going to use my third arm to clip you could also have somebody hold it for you if you'd like. Just depends on how steady your hands are. I'll take my other piece of wire here. Okay, so now we're gonna solder the actual wire. I've heated up my soldering iron using that third arm to help hold that speaker wire. And again, I'm just gonna use the soldering iron to heat the solder. I'm not putting solder the solder on the tip is not what's getting onto, onto the wire. So I've tinned the tip. I put a little bit of solder there. I'm also gonna put a little bit right here and just use that iron to help heat up that solder. And you really don't have to be on that for very long. It's just a quick kind of in. You'll know it's a good solder if it shows um, that it's shiny. That kind of lets you know that part. Okay, so I think that got solder drill well. I'm gonna put that back in my stand to be safe. I'm gonna look at this other speaker wire. Okay, so it's ready. This little area is ready to be soldered. So I'm gonna grab uh, my soldering iron. I have my solder. Again, I've already got some on there. It's already heated really nice. So I'm just going to put where that hot spot is. I'm gonna put that onto the wire with my solder. Get a nice little connection there. Okay, and then I can put that back in. Then what I would wanna do since those have been soldered is I'm gonna take a little piece of electrical tape and I wanna cover those because we don't want those two soldering places to touch each other because it'll turn the toy on. So I'm gonna use my scissors and a little bit of um, electrical tape. Cut off just a small amount. So I'm gonna wrap that tape around that piece and I'll get me another small piece and I'll wrap that as well and that just kind of helps secure that connection. You can, uh, another option that I do just to kind of keep the wires close and together is I go ahead and do a third piece of uh, tape there, duct tape, to secure the two strands together. And that helps just kind of give that extra stability. What you can do next, just to double check to make sure that connection's working. Remember how you have the two uh, bare wires on the other side? So if you touch these two together, your toy should play. So let's double check. And they do! So you did a great job soldering. That part is done. So this is kind of the final, one of the final steps. You're going to take that end and you'll take your casing or your, um, sorry, your inline jack. This one is a 1 8 mono inline jack phone jack. And we'll give you the links on where you can purchase these. 
may be hard to tell from there, but this uh, top part, the silver, actually unscrews from the black uh, casing part. This is an important part. Everybody forgets this because we get busy and we're so excited to, to get going on it. Make sure that you take your black casing part and you take your two wires, you're gonna probably hear the toy play, and you're gonna lace them up, uh, not where the threaded area is, but the unthreaded area, and pull that straight up. And that way, it'll be there for when you're ready and can finalize everything. So it's there, ready for us. The next part is you're gonna take your post, and each, um, the post will have a bottom hole on the long part, and it'll have a hole on the side. So one wire will be going in the bottom post in the hole, and this other wire will go in the top hole. So we're gonna go ahead and do that part. I'm gonna thread it through. That's where extra lighting can help, or a magnifier. You might even have to twist the wires a little bit just to make sure they're not straggling goes in the hole and then I'm gonna pull it straight down. You do wanna make sure um, that all the wires are through there. I see that I have an extra wire hanging out and we don't want that. So I'm gonna take that back out and put it back in. So just really be sure every single strand of that wire is through that hole. Okay, so now we're ready to actually solder. You put the speaker wires through the post and through the second post on the jack. I um, am using the third arm and that kind of makes the jack uh, fall down a little bit. So I want to prop it up just a little bit so I can have a better clear approach to solder. So I'm just going to use my little uh, speaker spool there to help. I'm going to make sure I have some solder already. And my soldering iron was waiting for me safely in the stand. So I'm going to go ahead and use some solder with the soldering iron. Solder that. Now I can actually turn this so that I can get to the other area a little easier. And I'm making sure those wires are in a horizontal fashion, not straight down towards the post. That's just to ensure that those speaker wires don't touch the post. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and solder in this area. Okay, that is done. And then I would want to again cover that area with some tape. I'm just gonna use a little bit though. You have to remember that the casing is fairly narrow and so you don't want a lot of bulky tape keeping that um, post from being able to screw in to the casing. So I'm going to use my scissors and cut off a small area of tape. And then I'll use that tape to cover where I've soldered. I'm gonna lace it through the two speaker wires. And be able to wrap that around. Get myself another piece of small tape. And wrap it around the second post. And again, we're doing that so the two areas do not touch each other. That'll be important. So that would, that should work. Then remember we had the casing down here at the bottom already. We had put that on because we were thinking ahead and we're going to pull that up and then be able to very gently help guide the post in. And then you can hold the uh, silver piece uh, still and screw the casing in. And there you have your jack where you're gonna plug in your switch. Make sure after you have uh, done all the steps that you put back in, and I'm gonna take off, that was that tape from before, put back in my stuffing for that little hand it all stuffed back up and then you can stitch it to just be able to stitch it closed to make it extra safe for that little one. 
We've worked hard on this. Let's see if it works. We did it. I'm gonna hit it again. This has a second feature where it's music first and then light second. And then if I hit it one more time, it comes off. If it didn't work, there are some troubleshooting things that you can do. Often I find it's not in the wires up here, although it could be. I usually start with checking at the casing first and I unscrew it and just make sure that those connections are still in place um, and that they're not touching each other. If they were touching each other, you would know it because the toy would be going off. I often will look over here as well and just make sure that the connection is there and the soldering was good. Those are kind of really your only troubleshooting areas there. Could be another one, could be the battery's dead. Gotta check that, that's why that battery tester is good. Um, it could be a faulty switch as well. But that is how you adapt a toy for a little one um, for switch access. Uh, do know that um, we're gonna have uh, other videos on how to actually make switches, uh, ideas for switches, um, for switch toys, and how you can use them not just for turning on and turning off a toy, but how you could maybe use a toy car that moves and it could knock down blocks and just give you a lot of different ideas on that as well. You just need to su subscribe to our YouTube channel and on the link, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Bye.